Hello folks, it's Sarah here again. Thought we'd have a bit of a play afternoon. It's a wet drizzly Sunday here, so I could do with something to cheer me up. So we're going to make um, a fascinator and we're going to paint and dye the cinema. Because what I ha always end up with a lot of is odds and ends of cinema, little bits where I've cut off from making other hats. So I'm going to use these odds and ends of white. Now you could use ivory, but if you use a coloured cinema, I'll, I'll talk to you later, the colours you put on will, will change colour in effect. So anyway, so what I'm going to do first is out of my scraps, I'm going to cut lots of shapes. So I'm not going to have you sit and watch me doing that for five minutes. That would be really boring. So I'm just going to cut them and come back to you in a second. So as always, when we're cutting out shapes that we're going to manipulate, we need to cut them on the cross. So don't... Oh, I did one as a, as a, to show you how not to do it. Now I've lost it on the floor. See, it's always, a, it's always a nightmare when you're doing anything. See, I've cut this one with the fabric straight, like that. You don't want that because you can't manipulate it. You can't stretch it. So you have to cut it with all your fibres going crisscross. So cut on the bias. So I've cut one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Might cut one more because you should always have an odd number, shouldn't you? For aesthetics. So I've cut some fatter and some thinner and we'll see how it all comes out in the wash right so i've got my shapes i'm just going to put those to one side for a moment and describe what else we need so now i'm going to talk about what else we need for this project well we need some paper towel we need our dyes now i'm using three here three colors i've got procyon dye in scarlet Procyon dye in an ultramarine blue. Now, Procyon is used for straws, which is what cinema is. And acid is used for animal products like feathers and that. But I've run out of Procyon yellow, so I'm going to try a little bit of acid yellow. It probably won't take as well on the cinema, but that's fine because I want very, very pale colours. I'll need three pots for mixing my dye. You can use anything. And I need three brushes. I want a different brush for each colour that I'm using. So those are what we need to start with. Is I'm going to put my leaves on the tray and dampen them with some plain water. I will do when I get my... So I'm going to dampen them all down so that they take the dye better. Now I'm just going to leave those to soak for a minute in the water. So I'll come back to you in a moment. Right now my cinema is all damp and I'm going to take it off this tray and then just get the excess moisture off with my paper towel like this well, I don't want them soaking wet and I'm also going to dry the tray because I'm going to be using that so I want to get these so they're just just damp so oh, they're sticking to my paper towel I think they'll be okay. Spread them out a bit. Dry my tray. And now I'm going to put my leaves on my tray. So, one, two, three, four, five. I think I can put about six on at the moment. There we are. You have to do them a bit at a time if you haven't got a huge tray. 
Okie doke. I also now want to have some paper towel ready at the side here. So I'm just going to put a few sheets like this on the mat. Okay. Now, with the dye, I only want very, very small amounts of the dye. So what I'm going to do, I'll move that out of the way for a second. I'm literally going to use my brush to just pick up a little bit of the dye and put it in the dish. So I'm going to start with the scarlet because really all I want is a pink. So I've got that in there. I'll add some water. So you do get a very strong colour. So get a little piece of scrap cinnamite and just see what you think, if you think that colour is going to be too dark. Well, that is too dark for me. That's not, I want it slightly pinker. So I'm going to water it down even more. Be careful because once this dye gets on stuff, you can't get it out. So. I think that probably probably be about what I want it. So that's my scarlet dye. Now I'm going to go with my ultramarine blue. And again, just a tiny bit and some water. Now I buy all my dyes in little packets. You can buy them on eBay and craft shops. So I buy them in packets and then what I do is I decant them into pots and then write on them what they are because obviously the packets are very hard to control and you end up with dye all over your fingers. So a little bit watered down a bit more. All a bit trial and error as with most things with me and then I'm going to get a little bit of acid yellow I don't think this is going to work so well but you know you've got to give these things a go haven't you because as I say acid's not meant for the straw I only want a little touch anyway right Right, okie dokie. So I'm going to get rid of this. Careful not to get it everywhere. Straighten the bin. I'm going to put some more paper towel down. Right, and, and I've now got now my, really like my dampened cinema. So I'm going to think about how I want these to look and I think I fancy the red as being my first colour. So there we are. And because it's damp it sort of spreads which is nice. It it spreads up the, um, up the cinema. Now if you think it's spread too much or not enough you can either wash it out very quickly or you dampen it down again to get more of a, a blurred effect, more of an ombre. You're sort of looking to get an ombre effect. So, so I'll do these ones first. Sorry, I've gone all quiet, haven't oh, no, I? I should be talking to you while I'm doing it, but oh, you know, it's like when you're making something, you get so, you start concentrating, which means I'll start sniffing in a minute, and, and don't do what I did once, put the brush in my mouth. Oh dear. Because as I say, this diet, really I should have gloves on, because it, you know, stops your hands going red, pink, whatever, but... 
Now remember when you mix colours, it's exactly the same as if you were mixing paints in a pot. If you mix blue with yellow, you'll get green, etc. So I'm going to take my yellow now, my acid yellow, which I said I don't think will work quite so well, but I'm not too worried. And I'm just going to do the edges here. I want the blue to merge with the yellow and make green and I want some blue sort of down the edges and the middle. Give me a really nice ombre effect. I mean if you think you haven't got enough dye in you can always put a little bit but really really less is more. It's a bit like icing sugar if you put too much water and you can never get it right afterwards can you so it's best to uh, just put a little bit in see how it goes a bit more see how that goes it's a lot of fun you're all sort of combining painting and art with with hat making which I think is uh, jolly nice Right, when you think you've got them pretty much how you want them. Now, bear in mind, these are going to come out much, much paler. Okay? So I'm going to put a piece of tissue on my mat. And now I'm going to lift them up carefully. Take all the drips off. And put them on the paper. Like that. And I'm going to leave them to dry. Now, if I'm not happy with the finisher and I come back to them, I can always go over them. So I'll put that one there. There's a bit of space there. I'll put that one there. I'll put it there like that. Right, I'm going to paint the others and I'm going to let those dry and I will come back to you in a little while. So, as you can see, I've got one of my leaves here that I've made that's almost dry now. It uh, feels quite dry. So what I'm going to do now is hand roll the edges. And to do that, you literally just roll the edge over on itself like this now it's quite fiddly and it won't work unless you cut the cinema on the bias and it's quite hard on the skin on your thumbs and fingers so I'll do this one Right, when you've rolled it all round, you'll see that the colour becomes more intense, obviously, where you roll the um, roll it over. Now, that's going to be my front end, so I'm going to roll that together. And I'm going to stretch it to stretch out those rolls that I've made. So, if it's still a little bit damp, they might start coming undone again. So, just keep rolling and because they'll dry as well under your thumb so there we are they're pulled now you can if you want stretch it out to make it even more curved and wider or you can stretch it out that way to make it longer and thinner so what i'm going to do is roll all of them now 
and come back to you in a moment. Right, so all my petals have been curled and I've decided that the pink will be the centre. So I'm just going to check that the end, the other end is curled around and just the excess snipped off. So I'll do that now. Now, what I've done is I've kept my dies out in case I wanted to add any. And I added a little bit to this edge here. I thought, oh, I fancy a little bit of yellow on the edge there. So, again, you can just add some more if you want to. Okay, so it's a good idea to not put all that away until you've, you've finished with it. So... I'll just finish snipping the ends off. Now for my centre, what I've done is I've wired up some large pearl beads. So I've just put wire in and twisted it. So I'm going to arrange these for my centre, like my stamens. And again, an odd number looks best. So five, I'm going to have five like that. I'm going to twist the wire just to keep them all together and then I can uh, pull them out, push them in, whatever I feel. And then I've got to decide how I'm going to arrange my, my petals. Now what I'm going to do is have the smallest ones at the centre and the biggest ones on the outside. So I'm going to pick my smallest ones like this. And what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to actually put a little dob of glue just to stop those from moving around while I'm putting the whole thing together. So a dob of glue and wrap that around there and it just keeps it from wiggling about. So I choose my leaves or my petals and then I build up my um, sort of ombre flowery floral thing. Oh, there's an end there I haven't cut. Oh, not very good scissors those are they? So let me see another smallish one and another small one. Oh there's a nice one there. Right Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start stitching these together, which means I've got double extra strong thread in a needle here. And I'm going to just wind it around the bottom. Oh, so I'll just come up, put my needle through there to give me a starting point. Double knotted thread. There we are. Wind it round a bit tight wind it tight and I'm just going to put a stitch through and then I'm going to carry on adding so I'm going to add some bigger ones now like that uh, like that you can we'll move them all about at the end I just want to get start getting the thing together so Again, some more windy round of thread. And one there, I think. And one there. Right. Wind that round again. Make sure it's really tight. You don't want anything coming undone. Put a stitch in to finish it off. Uh, oh. Right now, what I can do is I can now play with it and move them about and twizzle them and twist them and 
pull the cinema out and make this how how I want it to look so now's the time to start playing with it so I'm going to play with it now Right, so that's it. What I shall do is I shall cut my thread off and I shall shorten this stem here so that it's not too lumpy for attaching it to anything. Hope you've enjoyed this short video and hope you have fun making. Thanks a lot. Bye.